Welcome back. Few things in life make me happier than when I get to talk science. And this morning, we're not just talking science, we're talking science with one of the world's leading theoretical physicists, a man who has made a career out of taking incredibly difficult concepts and explaining them in a way that just makes sense. It's a real gift, taking hard things and making them sound easy. Professor Brian Green, welcome to our show this morning. Thank you. There are so many things I want to talk to you about, but first I have to say you're coming to Canada. You've got an upcoming show next week explaining the mysteries of the cosmos in an event called Beyond the Stars. What's this all about? Yeah, so it's an evening where I'm going to take the audience at Roy Thompson Hall and we're going to go from the beginning of time to the closest that science can take us to the very end of time with the goal to understand how we human beings, we life forms that can think and feel and figure all this stuff out, how we fit into that cosmic order, that cosmic unfolding. So it's gonna be a visual evening and an evening of big ideas as we journey together through the universe. Oh my gosh, that it is gonna be a night that you don't wanna miss. This morning, all I wanna do is just pick your brain about science. So if, if I can, if you'll indulge me, I have a ton of science questions for you. The first one, we've got this picture that NASA showed of what appears to be, a, in my understanding, a black hole and a star. This was from the Hubble telescope. Can you tell us what's happening here? Yeah, so black holes are these wondrous, monstrous objects that have incredibly powerful gravitational pulls. Einstein himself didn't even think that they would be real, even though they come out of Einstein's own theory. That's how extreme they are. And when an object goes near a black hole, the gravitational tug on one side can be so powerful that it can rip the object apart and ultimately devour it. And that's what black holes typically do to passing stars. And so this is a, a beautiful example of that process in the cosmos. Professor, what is the point of a black hole? What does it do in the universe? Does it have a specific role other than just gobbling up other things? Well, it's a really good question in terms of purpose and role and meaning when it comes to the cosmos. I don't think there is any ordained purpose for black holes, but they are an outcome of the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is the dominant force that governs how things behave on the largest of scales. It's why there is a sun, it's why there is an earth. Gravity pulls all the constituent particles in the cosmos together to yield these agglomerations of matter. But gravity can go even further. It can be so powerful that when it forms that star, that star may be so big that it can't support its own weight and it continues to collapse in on itself and when it does that, if it gets sufficiently small, sufficiently dense, it becomes one of these black holes. So we believe they are at the heart of most galaxies in the universe. And so back to purpose, if you will, in the sense of what it does, galaxies may have the form that they do because of the black holes that reside in their centers. Something else that made big headlines just last month was nuclear fusion. I can't even say it properly. Can you, we don't even know what it is. Can you explain why this is so big? Yeah, so the way the sun, the way stars produce that the energy that they output is through nuclear processes. I agree, it's a tricky word to pronounce. And what happens in a nuclear process, you have some nuclei, the heart of atoms, that meld together, they fuse together. And when they do that, a little bit of their mass gets converted into energy through Einstein's famous E equals MC squared. And that energy comes out as sunlight, as heat, as starlight and so forth. Now, if we could harness nuclear fusion on Earth, if we in essence made little stars on planet Earth, we'd have a virtually unlimited source of energy. And so we've been trying as scientists for a long time to replicate these processes inside of stars. And now it looks like there's progress. It's not something that's gonna transform everything in five years, 10 years, it'll be longer than that. But we are on a trajectory to be able to harness nuclear fusion and in that way have a source of energy that will be clean and unlimited and wow. That would wow. transform everything. That's very cool. Professor, thank you so much. Thank you for indulging me, for being so gracious, and for giving us the time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you. Good luck next. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.